Over to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, I am greeting you from Chile. I am Argentinian, but I, but I live in Chile. Uh, well, so uh, it's an amazing moment to be, to be with you. Although I, I can't see you in this moment, I just see your names there, but I know you're there. So that is, that is also, that is wonderful. Uh, well, as Stephanie told you, I am going to refer to father pose. I am going to refer to a way uh, to a certain technique in order to generate better results when working with uh, fiber posts. So to, today, when we perform restorations on endodontically treated teeth, by the way, when you see ETT, of course, that means endodontically treated teeth. Today, we have two approaches, two the very clear approaches uh, we, we, uh, we have what we call the conservative approach. That would be the wide side of the different possibilities we have. The conservative approach means not inserting in the post, uh, uh, normally performing partial restorations. They can be direct restorations, semi-direct restorations, indirect restorations as well. We normally make inlays, onlays, overlays, and endocrines. Uh, on, the, on, the, on, on the other side, we can call that the black side, not the dark side, but the black side, because it is the opposite as the, the white side, we have what we call the prosthetic approach. In that approach, we insert uh, uh, different endodontic posts and we normally uh, uh, use uh, crowns to finish the endodontic re rehabilitation. Uh, the, the conservative approach, so the approach not working with the endodontic post is more suitable for reasons you are going to understand uh, in some minutes is more, uh, well, is more, um, has to do more with the restoration of molars. And on the other side, the, the prosthetic approach has to do more with the restoration of incisors and canines. That means the front teeth. But if we are analyzing the white side and the black side, there is, there is uh, as you might uh, guess, there is a gray area in between. That gray area corresponds to the rehabilitation of premolars. Premolars can be treated 50% uh, of the times uh, with, uh, with, uh, with that conservative approach and 50% of the time with the, with the prosthetic approach for reasons, as I told you before, that you will understand very, very soon. So what's the main purpose to use an endodontic post? What do we use an endodontic post for? Well, uh, most of the uh, authors that uh, wrote a report or something regarding the restoration of endodontic posts, they agree that the main purpose to use an endodontic post is to fulfill, is to get connection between the root and the prosthetic crown. Connection, connection. Uh, well, this is, something that has to do with the fact what, what, what I have just told you. Uh, when uh, working, for example, on front teeth, we are not going to have the same situation when finishing the endodontic treatment, the same situation as when working over molars, for example. The, 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 the teeth will, those teeth will have, they, they have less volume, they have less tissues left. And as you might be understanding, those tissues left are, uh, if present, they can be the way to connect the restoration to the root. Well, uh, when those tissues are not present, when we have teeth with scarce crown tissue remnants, as, it, as the slide says, uh, well, it is most probable that we will need some kind of artificial connector. That artificial connector is, of course, the endodontic post. Uh, there is some other uh, function that uh, some authors uh, uh, say that endodontic post may fulfill. That is the dissipation of forces over the root and periodontal tissues. Well, uh, that is something that should be discussed a little bit more, but definitely uh, the most important reason to work with an endodontic post is to generate connection. And that, of course, is going to be necessary when we have in the ground part uh, of the tooth uh, few tissues 
left teeth, as the slide says, with the scarce crown tissue remnants. Many research studies conclude that endodontic, and this is very important, uh, many endodontic, uh, uh, I'm sorry, many research studies conclude that endodontic posts shouldn't be inserted in teeth with what we call a ferrule of uh, a ferrule of two millimeters high, one millimeter thick, and 300 degrees around the core. Uh, in those cases, the, the ferrule will guarantee the connection and will allow a proper dissipation of forces. Uh, so uh, perhaps today the question would be for, for situations as you see here, uh, do the tooth you work on have that kind of ferrule, for example, because we normally analyze this when observing the preoperative situation, uh, but you see there, because of the shaping of the core, well, perhaps less, t uh, less tissues can be le left there in the crown part of the tooth and left tissues that will act as the, uh, that ferrule. So that is something you have to uh, consider. Well, if that uh, amount of tissues, remember, two millimeters high, one millimeter thick, and three, 300 degrees around the core are present, well, you won't use an endodontic post. Uh, remember, the endodontic post is going to be needed if that amount of tissues are not present. So for those situations, for situations where those tissues are not present, different endodontic posts were created for carrying out those functions. Remember, mainly the connection of the restoration to the root. Uh, those different endodontic posts can be customized structures or preformed structures. Well, speaking about metal, metal, uh, metal posts, you already know cast metal posts for sure. That's it. That's a very good example of a uh, of a custom structure. Uh, also, we, we, we also have, for, uh, of course, you already know preformed structures when referring to metal posts. Uh, and on the other side, we have. Uh, very different structures from a mechanical point of view, more elastic and dentin mechanical uh, behavior, um, uh, more elastic and dentin like mechanical and optical behavior structures, which are the fiber posts. Fiber posts, the normal, the normal, or uh, the most common way of working with uh, fiber posts is working with preformed structures, but there are also possibilities to generate custom structures when working with fiber posts. So one, one, one uh, sort of materials, metal structures or fiber posts can be, both of them can be customized structures or preformed structures. Uh, but as I told you before, when, um, there is, uh, when there is not appropriate ferrule, as I told you before, a post will be needed. Uh, as being the tissues scarce, if we are speaking about that there is not ferrule uh, and that an endodontic post is needed, of course, we are speaking about situations in which, which we have scarce tissues. There is no ferrule. So the forces that are uh, going, uh, the forces that are generated and will, uh, um, that fo the forces generated over the crown of that restoration of course, they will concentrate over the post. The outcome, because of that, the outcome of every rehabilitation process using post is going to be jeopardized. So if posts are inserted in the situations where they are supposed to be inserted, that is situations in which we don't have that ferrule, well, uh, we are going to uh, see, or, or every time we are going to see a concentration of forces over those posts. So from that concentration of forces, we might, uh, well, the, uh, that concentration of forces might lead to a mechanical failure of the restoration. If that mechanical failure occurs, that mechanical failure might show or will show two patterns. There will be two patterns of that mechanical failure. Uh, mm, perhaps, uh, when working with more elastic 
uh, structures, what we might suffer from are fractures of the post. And when working with more stiff, rigid structures, we might suffer from root fractures. Uh, so that pattern of failure mostly depend on the elastic behavior of the post. This is very interesting to analyze and of course very important to remember. When working with more elastic uh, structures, the situation might be of course a problem. The fracture of the post is a problem. But when the fracture of the root appears, well, that's not a problem, that is catastrophic. So uh, definitely because of that to start uh, 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 the analysis of uh, the fiber post, well, this is definitely a very important, uh, something very important to take into consideration. Remember the elastic behavior of the structure, the elastic models of the structure, when working, when working with more rigid, more stiff structures, such as any metal structure, we can also include here in this group of structures, we can also include, include those zirconia based. Uh, they are not so uh, popular, but they exist. And in some, in some places they can, be, they can be more popular than, than others. So when working with those rigid, stiff structures, this, uh, as remember, we don't have uh, tissues left in the ground part of the restoration. So we don't have that ferrule. The forces are going to be concentrated over the post because of that concentration of forces when working with rich structures, the forces are going to be, um, they are not going to, they're going to be transmitted by the structure, by the post and we normally concentrate in the apex area of that structure. Same thing as you see here in this, in this drawing. They, they are gonna, they, they, there will be a concentration of forces here in this area. Uh, many times this area has thin dentin walls. Well, concentration of forces over specific areas and uh, over thin dentin uh, remains, uh, re, uh, re, re, remaining tissues, well, that is going to be definitely, or might be definitely a problem. So uh, the situation is different when working with more elastic uh, structures. Uh, because of being more elastic when receiving, when that concentration of forces takes place, the structure might the form in the elastic range might deform, and because of that, the mm, well, the the, the 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 mechanical behavior is going to be very similar to that of denting, and because of that, those forces are going to be evenly uh, um, dissipated over the over the, the denting. There there won't be when working with these structures. There won't be concentration of forces in specific areas. Uh, I think the drawing is pretty clear. You can understand the drawing very well. So because of not having concentration of forces over specific areas, the mechanical, the mechanical uh, outcome of the restoration is definitely more it's safer when working with more elastic structures. And you see here, this, the, this slide has, uh, well, different, uh, elastic modulus of different materials uh, uh, and uh, uh, structures um, written. And you can see that when the fiber poles, the, the fiber, fiber poles are what we call anisotropic structures. That means that they have different uh, elastic modulus uh, depending on the direction of the load they are going to uh, be, uh, um, they, they will receive. Uh, so when receiving uh, forces in an angle of 40, 45 degrees, that is pretty much what happened, for example, over the front teeth. Uh, well, when we're receiving forces with that direction, they, they exhibit uh, an, an elastic module very, very similar to that of tension. So that, that is what generates what you are seeing here, an even distribution of stress over the denting of the root canal. So as no stress because of that is concentrated over specific areas, remember the even distribution of stress over the root denting, working with fiber posts 
turns into a more predictable and safer technique. Uh, I am sure you already know this. I am not saying anything new. And there are many, many reports that say what I have just said. I, we are not going to read the details of these reports, but I have already made a, a summary of what they say. Um, so the elastic module uh, of an endodontic post is a crucial aspect to consider. There is no doubt about that, but it's, it is not the only one. When analyzing the mechanical outcome of the restoration, there is another fact to consider, another uh, condition of that structure we need to consider. And that condition is the resistance. Uh, it's definitely, a, this is a variable in order to understand why the, what the outcome of our restoration might be. So we need, when working with an endodontic post, we need a combination of uh, elasticity expressed in what we, uh, uh, we might call as flexion uh, with uh, resistance. So both conditions, both mechanical conditions have to be together when working with an endodontic posts. Uh, so you, you might be thinking, how is it possible to, to have, for example, a, a structure that it, it, it's, it's elastic and resistant at the same time. Well, you see there the wing of a plane. Perhaps that is that is one of that that is one of the best examples to, to take or to to analyze when thinking about of a structure which is elastic and resistant at the same time. The wing of a plane, a bridge, as you see here. Um, uh, this is the, the bridge I cross when I when I go to my home city. I have to cross I have to cross this bridge with uh, which is over the main, the, the widest uh, uh, river in the country. Uh, but when, when, I, when, when I reach a traffic jam and I'm stopped there uh, and, a, and a truck passes on the other way, well, the bridge moves. Well, that is what I am just speaking to you about. The elasticity of the, of the structure and at the same time, of course, the resistance. Remember this slide, this slide is very important. Fiber posts show similar E modulus. The, C, the E modulus of, this, of the fiber post are all more or less the same, uh, but uh, not, they don't present the same resistance. There might be important differences between one another in terms of resistance. This is what normally dentists, we, we, don't, we don't pay attention to, or we, we don't know that. I, 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 really, I really can't understand why, but this is, this is real. We, we, we think of, in terms of resistance, we believe that fiber posts are all the same. In terms of resistance, what? Well, there are two resistances we have to, we have to analyze or we have to consider when thinking about fiber posts. What we call the resistance to fracture, that is normally also called flexural resistance of the structure. There is a, a static resistance, a static strength. Uh, one single load, take, uh, think this is the fiber post, one single load is going to be applied over the, the fiber post. The, po the fiber post is going to bend, it's, it's going to flex, of course, and uh, until it fractures. Well, the maximum of the load till the fracture of the uh, structure, that is the resistance uh, the resistance to fracture, the, flag, the fracture resistance of the structure. Uh, is that important, clinically speaking? Probably not, because there, there won't be, there, there, won't, there will never be a, such a strong uh, load in order to generate what I have just told you. Uh, there is another resistance the fiber post should be, or should, should have, and that is perhaps what really is important clinically. And that is the resistance to fatigue. Uh, fatigue is different. It's a dynamic strength. Cyclic loads lead to a slow crack initiation and propagation till fracture. So once again, the, po the post is going to be, is going to receive uh, different loads, but not now not one load 
that is going to be uh, increased till the fracture of the of the post. Uh, we are going to make or we are going to apply over the post many loads, many loads, loads that are normally fifty percent of the uh, of have fifty percent of the intensity or to the load that generates or which is the the flexural resistance of uh, of the post. Uh, but as you are seeing here, this is a this is a test, a fatigue test of a post. And you see the post in this machine that is receiving the load, but not one load, 10 million and 700,000 loads by the time the photo was taken. So this is what, what this is really what uh, perhaps from a clinical point of view, what really matters. But uh, normally, normally uh, the factors that lead to a higher or to a lower resistance to fatigue are the same variables though to, that lead to a higher or lower resistance to fracture. Because being the, 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 the first test, being an easier test to, to do, well, that is because that is why we normally read about the flexural resistance of the post and not about the fatigue resistance of the post. But this is what really matters clinically speaking. But which are, I told you before that there is a great difference. There was a great difference when uh, speaking about resistance uh, of other posts, resistance to fracture, resistance to fatigue. There's a great difference between or among the different fiber posts, which are the variables that lead uh, uh, to a higher resistance or to a lower resistance when speaking about uh, fiber posts. There are many variables and definitely yeah, you have to remember them. And these will explain you, will tell you that fiber posts are not all the same. They are very important differences, one another that will uh, generate different resistances in those structures. Uh, there's so many variables, so many more, but we have to analyze some of them because uh, they are really important. Well, the diameter, a structure that has a, uh, an increased diameter, as I will tell you later, and this is one of the, the, the main reasons why we might generate a technique like the one I am going to propose you in some minutes, uh, the diameter generates an, uh, uh, generates a, 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 an increased uh, um, resistance. Uh, but the models of elasticity won't change, at least working with, uh, with the diameters of the fiber posts we know where we are going to insert in the root canals. Uh, what else? The fiber matrix proportion. This is very important because the reinforcement component of, of the fiber post is the fiber. It's not the matrix. It's not the resin matrix. So as more fibers are present in the post, of course, the post is going to be more resistant. And take a look at what you see here in the slide. There are variations, variations of 35% of fiber content in fi some fiber posts but some other, some other fiber posts have 70% of fibers present. So of course that is going to generate a difference in their mechanical behavior. Structural defects in the in matrix of fibers, as you will see right now, this is also very important. The distribution of fibers, which should be uniform. Um, when it is not uniform, well, that might also generate weak points inside the structure of the post. The addition of the uh, between the fibers and the resin matrix is also very important. Sometimes those fibers are not well bonded to the resin matrix. Um, the radio peak materials added in the matrix or added in the fibers. You will understand why this is a very important factor as well. Well, the external surface condition and there are some some, some others. So different variables will generate more or less resistance in the fiber post. Uh, when observed under uh, an electron microscope, for example, you see here, this is a fiber post, which, is, uh, which has a proper microstructural condition. 
But there are some others, as the one you see here, that are full of bubbles, for example. Well, of course, the mechanical condition of this post is not going to be the same as the mechanical condition of this other post. What else? And this is the same post as, it, as in the other photo. You see here the, 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 the apex of the post, how it looks like. But take a look at the external condition of that post, how it looks like. There are fibers without being covered by the resin, uh, loose fibers as well. Uh, and when, again, the same post, we, we take a closer look to the apex of that, of that post, well, it resembles the head of a punk. You see there, the fibers, they are all loose. Uh, and once again, when we see that post, and we, we normally use that post in order to show what it shouldn't, what, what a fiber post shouldn't be. And we normally use, this is the macro lock from RGD, we use the macro lock what, to show exactly the opposite. Uh, and you see there, those two photos are taken with the same magnification. You can see properly well, it is quite obvious, the difference between one structure and the other. This is a research study we did at the University of Buenos Aires uh, with some colleagues. Uh, it was the, 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 the research study pretended to study a different, a different thing, but we had to make uh, uh, electron microscope photos of the of the post, and we saw that those differences um, that were quite obvious. As I told you before, poor bond between fibers and matrix. This is also very common. Areas without fibers, as you see there, uh, or the different the different problems, the different uh, situations. As I told you before. Uh, combined uh, in, uh, as you see here, bubbles, but at the same time, the, uh, the external condition, which is not, it is, is not properly. Uh, what else? Areas occupied by radiopaque materials. Radiopaque materials are normally barium, zirconia, uh, but those components, those that the barium, the zirconia can be placed in the matrix or they can be placed in the fiber. If they are placed in the matrix, you will see when observing the, 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 the fiber post under the microscope, you will see something like this. Areas in which, of course, the barium or the zirconia is there. And uh, because of being there, there is no way to insert fibers there. So for, from a mechanical point of view, this has the same effect as having a bubble here because there is, there is no matrix, there is no fibers in this area. So this is a weak point of the fiber post. Uh, uh, those posts, these posts, the posts that generate the, uh, that radio pacify, uh, that is that, that are being radio pacified using uh, the zirconia or using the barium inserted in the matrix, they have a problem. They have to balance, they have, they have to balance resistance and the, uh, the, the, the radiopacity of the structure. And those are the posts for you to, uh, to identify them. Those posts will never have, will never have a high uh, uh, radiopacity. As you see here, these posts, these four posts you see here, and this one here, uh, they have that condition. They, they have put the uh, radio peg components, they have inserted the radio peg components in the matrix. So uh, the radio opacity is never so high. Uh, you, you see here, the, the, the manufacturer of these posts, they inserted a metal wire there in order to, to be able to identify the, the post when making an X-ray. Well, a high microstructural quality is crucial to get a proper mechanical behavior. This is very important for you to remember. This factor, of course, turns even more critical in cases of a scared feral effect. Well, those are the cases in which we have to insert an endodontic post. So we can say that every time we work with an endodontic post, if correctly indicated, we have to think about the microstructural condition of the post in order to know how, what the mechanical behavior of the structure is gonna be. So fiber posts are not manufactured by God. That is quite obvious. They are not perfect 
structures. They have limitations many times. If God is watching the world in this moment, for sure, well, it's not taking notice of the father post. You understand that perfectly. Uh, the most common inconveniences associated with father posts are fractures. We were speaking about that so far, but there is another one. There is another very common disadvantage when working with fiber posts. And these, these are the dislodgements of the fiber posts from the root canal. And you have probably seen this many times. Uh, these lodgements from the root canal, the other very common, uh, well, problem when working with fiber posts, uh, remember fractures were the other, fractures are absolutely related with the microstructural condition of the post. Well, the dislodgements from the root canal are related or are relationed with something different. You see there what happens normally, uh, normally what happens when working uh, on when, or when you try the post in the post space after making the post space preparation, there is not a proper mechanical retention of the post. There is no intimate contact, especially in the cervical third of the post space. Okay, that these those videos what you are watching right now maybe they are uh, mm, uh, as, as an extreme situation, but they normally don't get. The, the retention, the mechanical retention, they should. So they don't get the mechanical retention, their section is round so they can easily rotate. These factors make them proto Uh What needs to be done when the fiber posts don't get an appropriate mechanical retention? And you take a look at that X-ray. You see that these posts, these, the three posts here are this post. They are cylindrical posts inserted in a conical space. Uh, should we inundate the post space with a resin cement to get adhesion between the post and the denting in order to compensate that inappropriate mechanical retention? Well, if that is done, probably the result will be exactly what you are going to see now. We were about to remove these posts. This post is again the same one because of the metal piece here. And you see properly well in the x-ray, this more radio opaque part of the root canal occupied by the, by the resin cement. Uh, when we were about to remove the post in order to gain access to the root canal to make the retreatment of the, of the, 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 the root canal, uh, as soon as we contact the, the, the composite in the core with the, with the ultrasonic uh, um, tip of the, 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 of the scaler, the structure came away. But the, when it came away, as you see here, uh, all the resin cement was bonded, was still bonded to the post. What, there were no remains of that resin cement on over the denting. Everything came away with the fiber post. Uh, you remember here, there is a cylindrical structure. All these, what you see here is resin cement. When working in this situation, we have two interfaces, two interfaces generated by the resin cement. Uh, an interface over the post and an interface over the denting. When observing those two interfaces closely, uh, more close, with a um, closer with a with a with a with an electron uh, microscope, we see, for example, interface number one. Well, except for these parts, there there is really uh, there is uh, there is adhesion of the resin cement over the surface of the post. This adhesion. What ha what happens in the other interface? In interface number two. Well, this is what happens in interface number two. There is a complete separation between one surface and the other. There is no adhesion there, of course not. And you might be asking yourself, so what are the reasons why there is no adhesion when doing such a procedure? There are many reasons. I am not going to analyze those reasons. That, that's why I, I left the slide in Spanish. I didn't want, I didn't want to analyze this slide. It would, it would tell me that the whole time I have, I have with you. Just, just to, to take into consideration, just to, to remember, there are many factors that will condition 
the adhesion over the denting of the root canal. Uh, factors that will, of course, uh, jeopardize that adhesion. Uh, the factors that have to do with the denting of the root canal, uh, factors that have to do with the, with the material you're working with, factors that, that have to do with the geometry of the space in which you are placing that material, which is the root canal, which is a very high C factor space that will generate stress when the material pretends to shrink because it can't shrink. Uh, many different factors that have to do with that. And we can go from the A to the Z. Uh, and here you see, I, I, I stopped writing factors when I reached the S. I could have reached the Z for sure. There are many factors that have to do with what I am telling you. So remember this, this is, this is what you should remember. Adhesion to the denting of the post space is a difficult task. So remember that. And remember, there are three mechanisms involved in the retention of the fiber post. Three mechanisms. Mechanism number one, which is for sure the most important, is what we call the primary mechanical lock that comes from superficial friction of the post against the surfaces of the post space. It's conditioned by the adaptation of the post to the surface of the post space and by the extension into the root canal. The more intimate the adaptation and deeper the post extends into the root canal, the more superficial contact areas will exist. According to different research studies, this is the most important factor for the retention of any endologic post. Remember that. But there is a secondary mechanical lock. The secondary mechanical lock is provided by the cementating material, a liquid that increases the contact areas between the post and the post space walls when solidifying. It's conditioned by the primary mechanical lock. As more mechanical lock we have, the better the secondary mechanical lock will be, by also, but also by the physical and mechanical properties of the lutic material. It's not the same to make a cementation with a calcium hydroxide cement and with a resin cement. So that is the secondary mechanical lock. And the third mechanism, for sure, the less important mechanism is adhesion. Adhesion is generated by a resin cement and it's adhesive. Micromechanical locks, the hybrid layer, the resin tags over the denting, and sometimes also chemical reactions. For many reasons, achieving adhesion, for the reasons we were discussing, uh, achieving adhesion over the denting of the post space is complex. And if it obtained, it usually, it's usually a short lasting process. It's important the importance of the adhesion, it's relative if proper, if proper primary and secondary mechanical lock were achieved. And there are reports that say exactly what I have just told you. And this is not new reports. For example, this one wrote, written by Cecilia Goracci, Franklin Tai, Marco Ferrari, Journal of Endodontics 2005. This is not new. I am not saying anything new when, 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 I, when I tell you. There are some other reports as well. So taking all the uh, what I have told you so far, taking all those facts into consideration, let me propose you a rational hmm, uh, five, uh, for working with fiber post composed of four points, A, B, C, and D. So four points to get or to perform a better uh, way of working. Point A, number one, the first uh, uh, point to take into consideration is the selection of the post. The selection of the post, the, of the post his, 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 has to be done according to different factors. Uh, what you see here, I am going to analyze some of them when we see if I, I have to hurry up, like if, I see, if, if we have the time to see the clinical cases. But for sure, when selecting the fiber post, a high flexural and fatigue resistance is crucial. Remember, we are going to be inserting these structures, if properly indicated, we'll be inserting these structures in situations in which we don't have a proper or we don't have a ferrule at all. So forces are going to be concentrated over them. So high flexural and fatigue resistance, 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 Think about that. And that is pretty much 
that is completely in, uh, related with the microstructural condition of the post. We need this condition, this condition. This is the, 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 the micro lock illusion from RQD. You see there the, the absence of, of all the defects we were watching uh, so far. Point B, point B is the preparation of the post space and many things have to be taken into consideration as well. Uh, I will refer to them same thing when, when we see the, um, uh, the different clinical cases I, I inserted in this presentation, but I want to make here a, parent, a parenthesis and analyze this. There are two ways in which we make May, which we may pre prepare the post space. Probably the most common, the usual way to prepare the post space is what we call the deferred technique. That means making the endodontic treatment, finishing the endodontic treatment, and some days or even weeks after inserting the post. So that is a deferred technique. Normally two clinical sessions will be needed for doing this procedure. There is another way of working. Uh, probably this way of working offers advantages. And that is what we call the simultaneous technique. The simultaneous technique, uh, technique means making an initial preparation of the post space simultaneously with the endodontic instrumentation while performing the, 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 the instrumentation for the in, in, during the endodontic treatment we are at the same time generating most of the post space. So after doing that, a partial filling of the root canal, only the apical third, and then making the final preparation of the post space, just using the, all the just only working with the calibrating drill that corresponds to the fiber post, just one calibrating drill, because most of the preparation has been done for by, when performing the endodontic instrumentation. Uh, there is a variation of this way of working, not feeling the apical third, but feeling the whole root canal and removing immediately after removing the, uh, the, the feeling of the root canal that corresponds to the post space. So these two ways definitely, definitely uh, have to be understood and also yeah, remember that when working with mechanized instrumentation that, that is working with rotatory file for example uh, you can preform the root canal for the insertion of the fiber post easier faster and in a more accurate way than when doing it with manual instrumentation the diameter when working with uh, instru uh, mechanized instrumentation that is rotatory files the diameter and taper of the root canal are increased. That is why the preparation for the post can be summarized to the use of just one calibrating drill or in sometimes no calibrating drill. Interesting, interesting. See, take a look at this situation. The endodontic treatment has just finished. It has just, it has just been finished uh, and uh, the, the instrumentation done in the way I told you with the rotatory uh, system. Well, it was not this one. <laughs> I wish we could, uh, we could have done uh, that procedure with this device. It doesn't matter uh, when performing the mechanized instrumentation, the results are in that sense are more or less the same. Uh, but uh, the, the preparation of the post space starts, you see that, that you saw that the root canal was filled completely. The endodontic feeling is removed. Remember, this is immediately after making the endodontic treatment and feeling the post space. There is no problem with making an, uh, uh, an uh, immediate, making the, uh, the post space preparation immediately after having made the endodontic feeling. And um, some reports say that it is much better to do it in that way and not do it afterwards, days or weeks after, uh, as we normally thought. Uh, the endodontic feeling is removed, reaching the working length of using piezo drills, uh, number one, most of the times, or working with a hot instrument and the piezo drills, or working just with a hot instrument. So the idea is to avoid 
wearing of denting when performing the pose space. Once the, as you see here, the gutta perca has been removed till the working length, well, after doing that, uh, and after making irrigation with different water-based sterilized solutions, we need to use the calibrating drill corresponding to the post. We will be doing that with low speed. When I say low speed, I'm speaking about 800 to 1200 RPM. Using a, in an increased torque, three Newton centimeters would be right in order to perform this procedure. The goal, the, the objective is not to sacrifice tissue when doing the post space preparation. This is very interesting. After doing that, we need to perform uh, um, uh, the, what we call the final removal of the endodontic filling and, clean the, and perform the cleaning process of the post space using manual instrumentation. But how to do that in a space we can't see because there is normally there is no possibility to see inside the post space. Well, microscopes can give us here a very important help. And this is this is a video. This is another case, but it, it is for for this for what I'm trying to explain you. Uh, well, it's going to help me. And uh, after using the piso drill and the calibrating drill, that is what it was left. So making the final cleaning, the final cleaning with a microscope. You see how well you can see the gutta perca there, in this case, left on the vocal side and on the lingual side of the root canal because of the anatomy of the root canal. And using different instruments to remove that uh, endodontic feeling remnants. You have to remove it to perform the proper cementation of the post. So take a look at how easily when you are able to see, you can remove the excesses of the, um, the endodontic filling, for example, in that extension of the root canal over the buccal side. The goal is not to wear, to wear tissues when work with doing this procedure. Don't use files, don't, don't use uh, drills for this, of course. Just hand instruments. This is a mechanical, a mechanical uh, procedure you see irrigation, you see uh, this is a brush with some sterile water-based solution with a detergent substance in order to finish the cleaning, the, cle the, the, the removal of those excesses already removed. Here I am, I'm listening to New Order. I, I, don't, I don't think you can listen to the music. Uh, and once that is done, the gutta perk is going to be packed apically. So when doing, you, you see that there are no remains over the walls of the post space. Everything seems to be okay, ready to insert the post. So when doing this, we might reach these situations. As you see here, the, mm, the, the root canal well, the endodontic feeling seemed to have a perfect con continuity with the, with the endodontic pose. If it wasn't for the different radio opacity, you weren't able to notice the difference between the endodontic feeling and the, and the, and the post because the, 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 the diameter is being continued, the taper of the root canal continues when one thing or the other. So that is the idea probably when working today when fiber posts. Consider the fiber posts as part of the endodontic feeling. Of course, they are. So, same situation in all these slides. Point C, remember, point A was the selection of the post. Point B was the, mm, the rational preparation of the post space. Many things to say about that, which I didn't say. Uh, po point C is the obtainment of the mechanical lock, and many times also a thicker and more resistant structure. And this is, this is precisely that this, this has to do what, with the subject of my presentation. Uh, for, because we, for doing that, for obtaining the mechanical lock, there, are, there were many techniques described. You may you probably, probably identify the accessory posts. The accessory posts are a very simple technique. Uh, 
uh, they can be placed fast uh, in, comf in a comfortable way. But you see that the accessory post only contact the denting in few points. Because of that, even the, the, these structures are more elastic, there is concentration of forces. So uh, because, because the structure only contacts the denting in few points, a different situation is what happens here, working with the FRC customized post. You see that the, the post is here and all this, what you see here is the, is the FRC material. When that is done, there's going to be a much more important contact of the structure against the denting walls. And because of that, there won't be concentration of forces. Uh, so the FRC customized fiber post is another way of making, well, a custom, because probably you heard about the, uh, the, the composite resin customized fiber post. Well, this, that's a, that is a well, very well-known technique. But what, ha what happens here, the material uh, where you might be using in order to make this uh, for getting the, the customized post is not the best material because composite resins are not suitable for resistant flexural forces. They resist very well compressive forces. We need fibers. So that's why we are going to be working with fiber reinforced composites materials, FRC materials to make this customizing process. Uh, there are some other options. For example, this is an oval and flare fiber post. Maybe you, you, you know it, this is a macro oval. The macro oval has an oval section and an increased taper here. That is why it can generate, well, the mechanical lock many times without anything else. And many other times we need uh, we still need to customize that. Uh, uh, but in every time, uh, using the post alone or using the post with another materials, we will still be using a thicker structure and because of that, a more resistant structure at the same time. Uh, we can also work with the cut, with cut cam procedures. We're working with monolithic fiber posts, for example. This is a, a growing uh, a, a technique with a growing popularity. Uh, but it doesn't matter what technique or the other, when performing a customized fiber post, you will be obtaining different advantages. Uh, mm, you will be uh, making a three-dimensional seal of the root uh, canal. Uh, you will be establishing friction uh, against the post and denting, and because of that, obtaining primary mechanical lock and, in and increased and safer retention and at the same time, an increase in caliber and in, because of that, an increased resistance. So this is very interesting to read. I am not going to do it because I don't have the time, but this is, this is in the Jorge Perdigao book, which is very interesting, in which he describes more or less the same I told you so far about per, uh, generating this OFRC um, customizing process. Point D, point D is the simplified cementation. The simplified cementation means working simple uh, by working and making the cementation by means of a simple and fast procedure, not having complex variables when performing the cementation, not making adhesive treatments over the denting. And remember the adhesion over the denting was the less important mechanism. The most important me mechanism was the primary mechanical lock. The secondary mechanical lock was the other important mechanism for the retention of the post. Adhesion is not so important. So why are we going to be focusing all the time on performing adhesive treatments over the denting if it is not so important? Uh, no adhesive treatments over the fiber posts, just cleaning process over the denting, the same, just cleaning processes, but the a cleaning process over the denting of the post space is, we, we can say, uh, not a simple uh, procedure. Uh, what else? Cementations done with materials with high mechanical properties to generate why, uh, the, uh, what we describe as the secondary mechanical lock and good wetting properties at the same time. Definitely, when speaking about a simplified cementation, 
uh, self-adhesive resin cements are for sure the most important uh, candidates or materials to select. Self-adhesive resin cements. Remember these resin cements because of having, uh, well, uh, acid monomers at the beginning of the reaction, of the setting reactions, they are they present a higher hydro hydrophilicity. And because of that, they are able to weight the surface of the dentin properly. Because of that, they are going to achieve a very high secondary mechanical lock. And also because of the, their mechanical properties. Uh, mm, there are some reports on these, these guys from Malaysia. Uh, they wrote the article, this, this was written in 2008, that I read in which I opened my eyes for the first time regarding this subject. And they showed that when working with the with with classical uh, resin cements with adhesives, um, well, the adhesion was lower than when working with zinc phosphate cement. The best results were obtained when working with the, in this case, the Relix, Relix Unisem, the Relix, I don't know how that is called in South Africa. Um, because in my, my, my country it's called U200, uh, but more or less the same, more or less the same uh, retention than when working with the zinc phosphate cement. But they were not the only ones that got that uh, research uh, conclusions. Several laboratory investigations found comparable or even higher retentive strength values between self-adhesive resin cements and resin cements that use two or three steps adhesives. And take a look at all the research studies I found. There are many, many others as well. So let me show you now two clinical cases uh, using these ABCD principles, this uh, rationale for a successful fiber post technique. The first clinical case done in 2014, the situation with a, well, you see a here a badly uh, done uh, porcelain crown. The, the aesthetic results, of course, are not proper. Uh, you see the feldspatic, this is a zirconia based uh, crown. The, 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 the feldspatic that covers the zirconia has been worn, worn because there was no space for it. So uh, when we, ma we make an x-ray, we see, well, the odontic treatment seems to be okay. There are no symptoms, nothing that seems to be uh, or uh, um, indicates to make a retreatment. Uh, and we see here, this is a titanium uh, preform post. We are going to remove the ground. We are going to remove the post as well in order to perform a better uh, optical aspect core. And from that, from that, uh, from that core to perform a new crown. So cut and destroy process, this is very important in order not to generate forces over the post and of course, because of that problems to the root. Uh, one, once the crown is cut, the pieces are uh, taken away. We make what we call the autopsy of the crown. This seems to sound funny, but it's not funny. Uh, because analyzing the crown, we can understand, to, to start with, we can understand that here, there was no, there was no space for the zirconia base and for the feldspathic that covered the zirconia base. So we had to generate a different, uh, or to, to generate, to establish more space when performing the core. So that is what we got always, always when opening uh, uh, the endodontic feeling, you have to use rubber dam for sure. So uh, first step is to remove all the composite there and to expose the, um, the, um, the metal, the, the, the preformed uh, post. So we did that. We started making some uh, scaling with, with, with ultrasound as you see there, the usual way to remove these structures. But here, there is something different. This is not a usual situation. The, what, 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 what is it different? Um, that this pose is screwed there in the pose space. And because of that, it's not going to come away so easily. Uh, once we remove all the composite, you see there, we, there was a lot of in the guta perca there. 
yeah, at the entrance of the root canal, they didn't pay any attention to all the things, uh, or they didn't take any any or all of all the things I told you into considerations. Uh, and if the uh, post is screwed there in the post space, you have to unscrew it. I don't know if the word screw is, it sounds, they don't sound properly, I don't know. But you understand the idea. It's working at like a, but you understand that properly. I don't need to say anything. So beware not to make the movement on the other side, because if not, you are going to have some trouble for sure over the denting. So when it came away, we saw uh, that situation. We made the cleaning process. We are not going to make the retreatment and we performed the post space here as not making the retreatment and not using the uh, uh, a, a rotatory uh, file or not using the mechanized instrumentation when performing the endodontic treatment. We, haven't in, uh, we, we have a different situation. So we have to use, because of that, uh, we have to use the whole um, drill sequence after using the piece of drill of in, for, by means of which we extended a little bit deeper into the root canal, we use the whole drills, the whole sequence of drills when performing the post space. Remember that when generating the uh, mechanized instrumentation when performing the endodontic treatment is not necessary. Well, this was not the case. So after doing that, the cleaning process done by means of the microscope, as I showed you, as I showed you with the other situations, but when we try the post, when we try the post, we notice the post that don't have uh, uh, the mechanical retention we intended. So, and you, you can see clearly that the adaptation, the surface adaptation of the post in that cervical fir, uh, third is far from being perfect. So what, I'm, what are we doing right now? Uh, this, we are going to use this material. This material uh, is what we call uh, an FRC material, an unidirectional parallel fibers FRC. Remember FRC comes from fiber reinforced composite. So fibers, normally glass fibers in, in a matrix, in a resin matrix, normally a demetacrylate uh, resin. Uh, so that, that strip is being cut in three or four pieces. Uh, uh, FRC materials, FRC materials today are becoming more and more popular. Uh, you see here, this is the unidirectional parallel fibers. There are different, different directions uh, of those fibers. And um, because of that, the clinical applications or indications of the material might be different. Here we are going to use this material for customizing the fiber post. Um, what else? What to need to take into consideration of this material? Same thing as fiber posts. There are differences when thinking about the mechanical, per, the mechanical behavior of these materials. Uh, mm, the microstructural perfection, once again, is related, is relationed with the, uh, with the mechanical behavior of the structure. And uh, the dental advisor, this is 2011, this is not new, 10 years, almost 10 years ago, they, they published this uh, test in which they compare the quartz spleen UD, the material we're working with, uh, from RTD with different uh, other FRC materials. Here you have the ribbon material. Because the ribbon material is very popular. The ribbon material is not a uh, it's not a pre impregnated uh, FRC material because of that. Because of that, uh, you can see uh, this is the dental advisor. Normally, normally they are serious uh, when uh, making this research. Uh, um, research uh, and uh, the results are. You, you can have confidence on these results. The fractural strength is a great difference, not only with the, with the word spleen, but also with, for example, the ever stick. It's a great difference. And that has to do with the, with the pre-impregnation with the, with the resin, which the uh, ribbon doesn't have. So uh, 
FRC materials with various fiber orientation and designs are available for different clinical or laboratory purposes. Uh, you see here the unidirectional, which is the one we are using so far. You can also have the wooden. Uh, these materials can work as a complement, as we are doing here, as a complement with the, with the fiber post. Some reports also show them being used only uh, 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 to create the, the fiber post by themselves without using the main fiber post. That is, that is interesting. We are using uh, today very, very, uh, it is very popular the, the, the indication for use, not the unidirectional, but the woven FRC as a dentin substitution material when performing the buildup when doing a conservative restoration, eh? for example. Uh, these materials are becoming more and more popular. They are not new. They are not new in dentistry, but the clinical indications they have, they are these indications, the, the, the indication to make a fiber, a customized fiber post, the indication of performing by themselves a fiber post the fact of using them as built up materials when performing a direct restoration. Well, those clinical indications are, uh, are new uh, uh, in dentistry, but not the materials. The materials, they, all have, they already have several years in dentistry. So these are the pieces, one scat of the quartz splint material you see here. What did we do over the post? The post was cleaned with phosphoric acid. We normally use phosphoric acid for cleaning purposes. Uh, once the phosphoric acid was rinsed, we dried the surface of the post. The post was uh, covered by the resin that the same quartz splint material comes with. This is a dimetacrylate resin without solvents, without monometacrylates just this GMA or a other dimetacrylate uh, monomer. Um, and once we did that, we thinned, we, we thinned the layer with air and the, uh, the resin layer is being photoactivated. So once we do that, these photos don't, don't correspond to this case, but it doesn't matter. We covered the surface of the post with the fiber. The not reaching the, the apical third, there is no need for doing that because there in that part, the post is going to generate, it will, will establish a direct contact with the denting. But placing the, the, the fibers in the middle third and especially in the cervical third of that post space. And we take, you see here the post, where here the fibers are on mesial and distal on the proximal side of the post space. And why is that? Because of the anatomy of the root canal. It would have been different if working on a K9, of, uh, uh, it would have been different as well if working on a premolar, for example, in, uh, in a second upper premolar, let's say some, uh, any, 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 any tooth. In that situation, we would probably use the, uh, the fibers on the buccal and on the lingual side. The, the post space was covered with glycerin, glycerin, not Vaseline, because glycerin is an alcohol. Because being an alcohol is water, it can be water salt, not the Vaseline. Vaseline is different. Uh, so we take the post into position. The post has to reach the working length, length that is very important. And once that happens, the, uh, the structure is going, the FRC has to be photoactivated. Uh, and you see uh, properly well in these photos, what was the situation before and what it resulted afterwards. So after doing this, we have to remove the customized fiber post. Before removing the post, make two pencil marks because now the post is a customized structure. And because of that, we, it will have only one, uh, just one uh, insertion access and that insertion axis has to be identified. This is very important. So make a mark here and make a mark here. So when making the cementation, those marks had to have to be on the same line. So uh, we remove the structure, we finish the photo activation. You see here, most of the fibers were kept in the cervical third, as we, we thought that was going to be like that. But we will still 
take advantage of the fibers in the core. And why is that? Because the, the core will have a great about um, um, a bigger amount of fibers, and because of that, it's going to be more resistant, uh, more resistant as well. So uh, we make the cementation. Remember the cementation done with a, with a self adhesive uh, cement, as you are watching here. Uh, before that, we we'll remove the glycerin, of course. The, the glycerin, as I told you before, is water can be water soaked, and after making the the removal of the glycerin the post space was dried with, uh, with uh, sterile paper points, as you see here. So the resin cement was injected in the post space. Well, this is a common cementation process. Uh, we, we make two or three pushes in order to let the excesses of the cement come away. And once that is done, of course, the photoactivation takes place. We cut the excesses of the post and the excesses of the FRC. Now, Yes, working with an adhesive over the FRC, over the denting, and photoactivating the excesses and performing the core, as you see there, with a flowable composite resin. Not only here uh, covering the, the FRC, but also this material is being injected here in this part because there is a separation between the post and the fibers. You have, you have to inject the material in that space. So that's done. Once that is done, the core is shaped. As you see there, a provisional crown was performed. The impressions were also made in that same clinical session. And we make an x-ray. This is, this is crucial to understand and to check what we have done so far. So we see the endodontic feeling. Uh, we see the fiber post here. There is a perfect contour. You see that there is there is not the, the taper of the root canal. There is not a continuity here. Uh, here you want you don't see what I show you what, what I show you in because there was no uh, the, the the instrumentation of the endodontic when performing endodontic treatment was not done for sure. In this case, was not done with a mechanized uh, uh, system. So um, the fiber post, the uh, the quartz spleen material is. Uh, radio lucent. Uh, mm, of course, you can identify it because you, you see here the line, the line of the resin cement, and you know that the material is there, of course. Uh, mm, the core, the composite core, is also seen there. We built a uh, porcelain cr a crown. This is a feldspatic, uh, no opaque base. Why, why isn't there an, an opaque base in that ground? Because that's why we removed the metal posts to perform a better optical aspect core to be able to insert this sort of crown. And why is that? To get, more, uh, to get a more natural result when performing the restoration. And Camila, that this is the name of the patient, uh, well, some days after she came back to the office this was, this was done in dental school. She came back to the office, uh, to our clinic in dental school in this way. The, the, the crown really looks very well. The uh, aesthetical aspect is very, very well, very fine. She was the patient, Camila, well, she was really, really happy with the results. And so were we, of course, especially when we see, when we saw, when, when we compared the results of the treatment with what she had at the beginning. So there is a great difference between one thing and the other. And Camila, yeah, Camila was really, really happy. And she was smiling and no one could stop her from smiling. Uh, and I also want you to show you this clinical case. This is clinical case is very similar to what we saw so far in many aspects, but there is a great difference. And that difference is that the, in this case, we are going to perform the retreatment of the root canal and in the same clinical session, inserting the post. So this is, as I told you before, a simultaneous technique. Uh, so once again, once again, central incisors, once again, we are going to work over this central incisor with a porcelain fused metal with a very bad uh, aesthetical aspect. Uh, when observing the X-ray, there is something metal there, we thought, 
we thought that was a gas metal post where we were wrong as you will see it right now. Once again, cut and destroy, don't start making different uh, techniques eh? and generating loads over that uh, structure because you don't know what it's there. Uh, and of course, there, there might be some kind of problem. So the, 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 the ground is, is cut, as you see there. Uh, uh, once again, the, the, the different parts of the ground are going to be separated. And when we remove the ground, we see the core. That core is made of composite. So we said to, so to, we, we started with, with my colleagues working there, we started to, to think, well, this is, this is something we didn't expect. Um, we, made, we made the autopsy. Once again, there is no space here. And take a look at the, the amount of porcelain in the buccal side of that crown. Well, that is lack of planification. If this was correctly, uh, there, there, there was made a, a, a proper planification of this situation, this wouldn't have happened for sure. So once again, rubber dam, once again, we started with the, you need to remove the, the composite core uh, first. Uh, and then start with the with the with the ultrasound, uh, and as you see there, uh, in this case it was very different to the other situation. As soon as we contact the 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 surface of the post with the with the with the with the tip, with the ultrasonic um, tip, the the post to give it to be to to give it a name came away. So this is what came away. Remember, this is the crown part of the structure. And this is the root part of the structure. This is not a post, at least not an endodontic post. This could be a drill or a nail. Well, probably, probably you saw something like this in your in your offices. Uh, it's something rather common here. Uh, so we, I started cleaning all all the all the, the the remains of the cement there of the different materials. There was a great amount of endodontic filling the materials, uh, cement, all mixed up. So I removed all that, I reached the endodontic filling, and then I stopped working. I got up and left my space to Jorge. Jorge, he, besides being a friend of mine, he's an endodontist and he's going to make the endodontic treatment, the retreatment. So he performs the mm, mechanized instrumentation here, working with the pro taper, device, this was year 2015. No, today, of course, he works with a, an improvement, we can say, of the ProTaper device, of the ProTaper system. So after doing that, before filling the root canal, he checks the, the, the length, the space needed for the, for the post. Uh, and uh, well, he uses just one Wuta Perka point. You see here the Wuta Perka point with the with the with the with the endodontic cement. He puts he inserts the the Wuta Perka point that of course fits properly, and afterwards he cuts the uh, and take a look at how the instruments gets inside the root canal, and he cuts the Wuta Perka point exactly in the space or, or in the in the length we, we he already he already uh, planned to leave the space for the post space. So this is uh, one, uh, the, the option I told you that uh, in which we are filling only the apical third of the root canal, as you see there. But, and, and he checks after doing that, he checks of having the uh, proper, the proper length for the post. So this is interesting. This is very interesting because now I will only use one drill, the drill corresponding to the to the post, and not the whole sequence of drills. And what else? The cleaning process is going to be much easier. Why? Because there is no guta perca there. There's no good, there is no guta perca in the post space. You can see there is some resin, uh, some um, endodontic cement here. Yes, but that cement hasn't set yet. So it's gonna be very easy to remove those excesses. So that is what I am doing precisely, ex exactly in that moment. I did it by, by the time I took these photos, I tried the macro lock, the macro lock post. And once again, I inserted the glycerin. And once again, I made the procedure 
with the with the quartz print material and you see there once again i inserted the post with the fibers same thing this part of the procedure is similar to the one i showed you before so i removed the structure i photo activated i completed the photo activation of the of the, the structure immediately after i i uh, covered the, um, as you see there, the, the surface of the FRC and the surface of the post with a flowable composite resin and generated the core. But here it is very interesting to, make, to, to take an X-ray and to analyze the X-ray. And we see more or less, it is difficult to, re, to understand where the endodontic filling finishes and where the post starts because the, the diameter is the same, the, uh, the, the taper, uh, both both are and the is the dotic feeling uh, as well. So uh, it is difficult to realize what what is what there. So um, the dotic feeling is there. The uh, fiber post is a macro lock is there, and what we see there, radio lucent, that is the uh, quartz plane material. Of course, bonded, as I told you before, the point D of the ABCD, it was uh, cemented with a self-adhesive resin cement and the composite resin that generated the, the core. Well, from here, from what you are seeing on the left to, to what you see on the right, uh, I understand that there is a good rate, great difference. So the the, the cores, we made the provisional crown. This is acrylic resin. And you might, think, you might be thinking well, acrylic resin. Yeah, uh, today we probably you, we, will, we will probably use a, uh, a, a bisacrylic um, resin to perform the provisional crowns. But if you want to customize the uh, provisional crowns, you can do something like this. You see that the, the, the acrylic has been, uh, we made a reduction of the buccal side of those crowns and then we, and then I uh, covered uh, or I inserted a layer of a micro hybrid composite in order to generate the buccal part of the crown to make a better uh, aesthetical appearance crown, provisional crown. Uh, so that is what I did. I made the polishing, I cemented and those are the results of the provisional crown. For you to remember, and this is the, uh, the last slide of the, of the webinar, uh, remember the advantages of making a customized fiber post, and especially when working with a FRC customized fiber post, you will be making a three-dimensional seal of the root canal. Uh, you have to understand the, the, the fiber post and the material that is making the, the customizing of the fiber post as the endodontic filling material, because in fact it is. So you need to generate a three-dimensional seal of the root canal. What else? Because of being cast, a customized structure, uh, friction is going to be generated. Friction against the structure to the denting of the post space. Uh, that is, that means primary mechanical lock. That means, remember this, that means increased and safer retention for the structure. And what else? Because of adding, because of adding that material, this is something that Perry Gao explained very properly, because of adding that material, you will be increasing the caliber of the structure. And because of that, you will get an increased resistance of the structure as well. So different advantages when performing a customized fiber post, especially when doing it with the FRC material. Well, I think that was the last slide. I leave you. I left you five minutes for the questions, in order not to uh, not to extend me from the time. Of course, uh, if needed, if you have more questions, we can. I, I can stay. I don't have problems today. Today is a holiday here. It's a holiday here, so I, ha I have the whole day. I guess you don't. So uh, this is the last slide. And I just want to tell you that really, I am really happy to be in contact with you. Uh, 
this is my first time I offer I offer a lecture for uh, for South Africa. No, well, no, no, not the first time, the second one because we have already made a, a meeting with a uh, with, with the guys from Ibo Dent. But uh, but it is the first time for dentists. So for me, it's it's a very special it's very special moment. I am very happy because of that, and I really want to thank you for for your time. So Stephanie, if very you, much. Yeah, thank you very you much. Your questions. Alejandro, for a phenomenal lecture with incredible designer slides. And so, Elias, thank you so much for your support from RTD. We really appreciate it. Um, if there's any questions, please unmute yourself and turn your cameras on. Um, Alejandro is available for some questions. While we wait for the questions to come up, I just want to let you know that if you are not yet using the fiber, fiber posts and splint from RTD, we do have stock. Please get hold of your sales representative and they will sort you guys out. Just gonna okay. allow a minute. Yeah, uh, the, of course, this technique, same thing as every other technique you do in dentistry, it needs some practice, okay? There are some things to identify when performing the technique to make the technique better. Uh, you, need, you need the practice, but Making making the technique two or three times will be enough to for you to identify which which are those sensitive sensitive factors to to to, to correct and to make the technique better. But that is something which is normal. Uh, so uh, maybe when you work with the FRC materials for the first time, you you won't be so familiar, of course, because it is it's going to be the first time you use it. You you you, you use them. So maybe you, you will find some kind of difficulty in order to work with them, but that is going to be, you, you, you'll be able to perform a better technique once you do it two or three times. There is no doubt about that. Same thing happens with all my students. I notice, I, I, I see that all the time. The first time they work with the FRC, they don't make a, an excellent uh, uh, procedure, but once they work, you, they, they they use them, they, they use them for two or three times, they do a much better job. So take that into consideration as well. What do they say practice makes perfect? Yeah, definitely, definitely, you are right, you are right. right. So we right. just have some compliments here from the chat box. Alejandro, I'm sure you've covered the full content and more. We really appreciate your time and okay. Oh, catch this session to rewatch and all previous sessions on Iverdent SA YouTube and our link on Facebook. We'll also be sharing the full clip on our WhatsApp groups. I hope you all have a lovely evening. Please keep a lookout for updates on our next Iverdent Zoom lives. Black aunt Amal. Goodbye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye to you all. Bye bye.